all right uh good morning everyone hopefully you guys are here okay fine uh so if you guys have missed our uh, dev host 2020 uh, videos you guys can go to our channel and uh, they, they will be there so anyways for those people who have uh, been to sos's first event so we will be introducing uh, what the open source community is uh, it's going to be a, a very brief session and then we'll jump to git plus github and right after that we will be looking at uh, how to use git okay so uh, starting from side the open source community so sosc in short um, we are conglomeration of um, communities which are present in our college so yeah so it's all based on open source right as the name suggests side the open source community we work on open source we uh, like to promote open source in our college as well as wherever we can so mostly all the students that we have um, a, across city all right so uh, what open source is is before we get into git uh, we all need to understand what open source is so open source is uh, pretty much let's say that uh, this is you all right and uh, yeah so let's say that this is you and you are uh, working on a code right so you wrote a code and what if whenever you write a code you know there are uh, always some room for improvement right so what if you want to improve your code or let's say that you have a problem with your code which i think most of us face every day so as students this is like our daily scenario of facing problems or let's say that you want to work with a friend so uh, traditional methods include um using pen drives or um, you know how using hardware device to uh, combine with your friends but uh, let's say that you want to work overseas how will you uh, is, is it i don't think it's uh, feasible to send your pen drive all the way to us if you are working with someone who's uh, staying there or you know let's say that you just want to flex your code you wrote something really nice and uh, you want to show the world that i have done this yeah let's say uh, anything that you created and you are very proud of it how will you show it to the world so this is where open source comes into play open source as the name suggests open which is uh, everyone can access it and source which is a terminology for your source code the program which you wrote so when you say open source you are making your program available to everyone in the world now how can you do it well let's say that you have a facebook account and um, you publish your code on your facebook profile well that can be considered as open source as well because you are showing your code to the world and uh, but the thing is uh, facebook isn't meant for coding right and it's although you can make it open source but i don't think that's like very good thing uh, because you can't really collaborate there so in this case we have different open source platforms which gives you uh, a place where you can host your projects okay so now when you make your source code open source uh, what happens is people across the world they can look into your code so all the problems that you had if you wanted to improve your code or if you had any problem with the code these people can help you improve it because you might be a beginner but there might be someone who has been working on it for past 30 years right so these people can help you so some of the open source projects that we have uh, are shown on the screen so you have linux and uh, android one of the most uh, you know one of the well known open source projects so uh, we all use our androids but we can see that although we have the same android versions you know there are some differences in the ui or uh, some features uh, now this occurs because the source code the base source code is similar so let's say you have android 10 uh, the base source code will be same but what companies do is they take this source code they improve it in their own versions and sell it out to you guys now side the open source community now we are a community as it says are driven by tech enthusiasts so we started as a very small community in 2017 and now we have grown to like around 200 people like uh, in our team and um, so we are having different clubs and communities inside our main community and you can see on the screen we have developer students club 
uh, then we have Django Girls, we have SOSWC, which is the open source women's community. Uh, this we exclusively started for women so that we promote women in technical uh, aspects. And then we have uh, Women Tech Makers, which is uh, similar to DSC, but uh, it is also um, it is also started by Google, just like uh, DSC. And then we have Grip Campus Experts. So right now you can see that me and him are wearing these uh, red jacket, you know, these red hoodies. <laughs> And uh, these are nothing but uh, provided to us by GitHub Campus Express because we uh, have completed the course and the training which is provided by GitHub for Campus Experts. And then we have Mozilla Campus Clubs. So these can be found, I think, almost uh, in 70 to 80% of uh, engineering colleges. It's pretty famous. Uh, then we have Node School. And uh, so we have started Node School chapter in our college. Uh, then we have Hack Club. Uh, it is also another uh, community. So what happens is the hack club is usually for uh, high school kids in uh, like uh, countries other than India. But then in India, in India, they started it for the colleges as well. Then we have Microsoft Student Partners. So these, this is another program by Microsoft uh, for uh, promoting uh, technology. So yeah. So uh, for the Sayadrians, what do we look for? I think. Um, it is pretty clear uh, that we we don't want your technical skills. We don't because we have uh, various domains in it. Um, yeah, fine. So uh, I think uh, that should be it for the cyber open source community. But now let's talk about Git and GitHub. So I think if you go into Google and if you write Git, it's pretty clear. It says something like uh, Git is distributed version control system and all those things, which I think can contain a lot of uh, confusing terminologies. Right. So we will uh, get back to you uh, with the presentation in just a minute. So I think on your screen you can see uh, what is Git, right? Uh, so what is Git is it says uh, Git is a distributed version control system for tracking changes uh, in source code during software development. Now, a Git like Git is basically a VCS, right? Version control system. So what do you think comes to your mind when you hear version control system? Basically, a software which is controlling your versions, right? Yeah. So it is. Um, pretty much that so you have uh, whenever you code right you might be having um, let's say that you are creating a code of uh, Facebook so what is the first thing that you will do you will create a login page right and okay fine so you created a login page next thing what you will do is uh, let's say you are creating the profile page what happens uh, if you are um, if your login page and your profile page is connected and uh, you mess something up your login page will be ruined as well. So in this, what you can do is you can make different versions of your software. So first version, you can just roll out your login page, right? And then you can roll out your profile page. And if, in case you mess something up in the later stages, you can just go back to previous versions. So what it will do is all the changes that you made, it will be reverted back to your first version, 
right so you can consider it something similar to a game right so when you play a game you have different checkpoints throughout so what happens is if you complete the level one then you complete the level two right then you go for level three and in case you mess something while going to level four what you can do is you die and you come back to level three so this is where this is something similar to what git does and next is github so it says github brings together so as i said in example about publishing your code to facebook why uh, the thing is uh, how can you collaborate you have a code and then you know publish it on your facebook and you the main problem with publishing it anywhere is because not everyone is a developer not everyone is working on whatever you are working on right and i don't think you know sharing your code with your uh, friends who are in some other backgrounds makes any sense so this is where one place where everyone have the same mentality everyone is in same field comes in so they can collaborate with each other and this is where github comes in so it's the largest open source platform uh, where you can host your repositories right. so you can push your code to github and people across the world who are working on the same category as yours they can look into your code and they can contribute right. so um, now we'll just uh, go into a quick So this is the page of GitHub, right? And uh, yeah, so this is the page of GitHub, and I think uh, Swastik will be continuing with how to download Git uh, and how to continue with GitHub, right? Now, uh, before we get into GitHub uh, and Git, uh, let's just give a quick introduction to why uh, this, um, why Campus Experts, you know, uh, started and. Uh, yeah, because I think we didn't introduce ourselves yeah. and uh, we will be introducing ourselves. So uh, my name is Akash Deep Bhagat and I'm a campus expert and uh, yeah, I'm also president of Saudi Open Source Community and I became campus expert in 2018 and yeah. Yeah, uh, my name is Swasik Shetty. Uh, I'm a GitHub campus expert, Microsoft Student Learn Ambassador, lead of Hack, uh, Hack Club and the uh, technical head of SOC. So yeah, over to Akash. Fine. So I think we will, uh, uh, you can see the screen right now and it's pretty clear. You have the sign in and sign up. So for the people who haven't signed up till now, you guys can just uh, click on sign up and uh, you guys can just uh, fill up your username, whatever username you want. Then you have email and password and I think it's pretty clear. So after you're done with uh, uh, signing up yourself, you can go, to, go and check your email. Um, yeah, so this is, uh, till then you guys can sign in or sign up, whatever you have. And, right. So now we will show you how to download Git. And I think Swastik will be doing it. Yeah, so I'll be continuing uh, uh, how to install Git and uh, how to, you know, use that. So, yeah, uh, let me share my screen first. So I think you got a glimpse about uh, Git and GitHub. So we'll go on. Uh, we'll do a hands-on session right now. Uh, so I think my screen is visible. Yeah. Uh, so if you are using Windows, then uh, you need to have a Git because uh, you don't have a terminal which is like that powerful uh, compared to Linux. So if you are in Linux, then uh, you you know you need not have a, uh, you need not download Git. So if you are uh, in Windows, then you can you know just go to git hyphen scm dot com page and then you can just have an option here to download git so if you just click on that it will automatically download a it will automatically download a file and you can just save it so i already have a, a git file so i i already installed so i am not gonna do that again uh, so once you install that uh, you can just right click on the uh, on your web uh, on your desktop and here you can see the options you have option to you know uh, use git bash and git gui so git bash is like a, a CLI uh, where you can write commands. So if you are a beginner, then I don't think 
uh, it is more you know uh, friendly to you so you can just go with the gui uh, gui is like very easy it is like a graphical user interface where you have buttons and uh, uh, buttons and you know text fields to write the text so yeah uh, we'll create a github uh, repo right now uh, just uh, go to github.com and uh, Okay, so this is a profile page uh, where you can see all the you know username, all the repos, and all the contributions. So we'll create, uh, we'll go to repositories and uh, create one repo. So repository is nothing but a folder where you can you know put your code or the project and show to the whole world. So we'll create a repo. So I'll name it as Git Workshop. So here you have option to add the uh, description. So if you you know building some projects, then you can uh, add the description there. It's optional. Uh, it's a good practice if you you know uh, describe what uh, what your repo contains, so that you know others can uh, look into that and they need not go through the whole code. So we'll write uh, Git as GitHub Workshop. So we have option to you know uh, choose between uh, private and public. So if it is public, then it's uh, it's like you're making a, uh, your repo open source, so that you know whole world can see it. So if you're making it private, then maybe you and your friend who has access to that can uh, you know uh, can see that uh, repo. So I'll make it uh, public right now, and uh, you have option to add the readme file. So uh, you might be uh, you might be seeing the readme file uh, whenever you install or download some uh, games or softwares. You will have the readme.md file uh, where they explain all the rules and you know how to install, how to use that. So uh, it's a good practice if you have a, a readme file so that others can uh, uh, you know uh, get a glimpse about your project and uh, it is helpful for your documentation as well. So we'll add a readme file as well and yeah just click on create repository yeah so once you do that you will get uh, you will uh, you know get into this page so here you can see uh, you have option to you know uh, copy the url so now this uh, now we are working on the remote uh, repository so we'll uh, you know download the uh, repository to our local machine and we'll start working there so to do that, you need git GUI or the git bash. So now we are, uh, now we are focusing on beginners, so we'll be using git GUI. So if you are familiar with the terminal there or and the Unix commands, then you can go with the git bash as well. So in this workshop, we'll go with git GUI. So yeah, uh, this is how it looks like. Uh, you have option to create a new repository, the option to clone your existing repository and you have uh, option to open your existing repository. So uh, cloning is nothing but you, uh, you uh, downloading your uh, uh, files from uh, remote ma uh, remote machine to a local machine. So remote machine is GitHub and the local machine is your computer. So we'll just uh, you know clone the uh, repository which we have created uh, just now and uh, we'll just uh, copy the URL and we'll paste it here. Then you have option to uh, choose your path. So uh, okay, we'll get into this folder and uh, create a folder called Git Workshop. So uh, here you need to notice that you know the repo name and the uh, your folder name has to be same or else you will get an error. So we will just clone a repo. So once you clone your repo, you can see here. See your uh, repo which you created just now is uh, downloaded, and you can see the files here. You can just verify if you need. You have you know readme file, and even 
here you have readme file so yeah this is how you clone your repo from your uh, uh, from your local uh, remote machine to a local machine so we'll you know try to add some files you now mm, okay this is a git gui where you can you know uh, this is like very uh, simple and uh, not complicated as uh, git bash so if you're using uh, linux or uh, mac os and uh, you i think you have some other packages for git gui so uh, it's you know it's more efficient uh, it's more efficient if you use uh, a terminal because it's linux and uh, mac os and yeah we'll add some files here we'll create a file a python file and just add some lines of code So here you can see I added a line called no I added a print statement. So you you can even notice here uh, your file has been added. So we'll just save and minimize it. So once you do that, uh, you can see here uh, uh, as Akash told, uh, Git is a virtual control machine which tracks all your changes and the files. So you can you know get back uh, to the previous uh, commit and you know. If if you if you mess your code then you can just go back to your uh, previous commit and uh, start working from there so now we can see if you rescan your uh, whole folder you can see there is one file called program.py which is unstaged uh, that is because your uh, git uh, yeah git virtual machine is uh, you know it didn't uh, track your uh, the changes so you can you know uh, tell your git to uh, track all the changes so to do so you just need to you know stage uh, stage uh, change so once you do that all the changes will be tracked by git so yeah and then you can you know uh, write a comment uh, commit message uh, so commit message is nothing but uh, you know you're just explaining what you have done so that your a friend or someone who looks uh, uh, looks at the changes he will get to know what changes you have made so if you're working on a you know a real big project and if you you know edit some one or two lines in between it's very hard to track so this will help uh, you in doing uh, doing that so we'll write a message saying uh, added print statement so once you do that you can just commit the message and now uh, yeah it has all successfully committed and then uh, now you can uh, push your code to your github see now you are working on uh, your local machine but if you check your uh, remote ma uh, remote machine it's nothing it's just the same you don't have any extra files so to push your code from your local machine to your uh, remote machine you just need to you know uh, run the command push if you are using terminal and if you are using uh, git gui then you have a uh, button to you know push your code so once you just click on that you will get an option to choose your branch so i'll be talking about the branch later so you can uh, like right now you're just working on one branch which is the master branch so master branch is the main branch so we'll just push the code from your master branch and uh, yeah we'll just push so once you push all the changes it will automatically uh, it will say it successfully pushed the changes and yeah you can see on the screen it says success so we'll check our uh, remote machine whether it got updated or so once you refresh you can uh, see that uh, yeah uh, okay they changed the branch name as uh, let's do one thing wait i'll delete extra branches so that you don't get confused so mash is a main branch so if you just refresh you can see the ch uh, changes uh, added print statement 2 minutes ago 
so yeah uh, we have added the uh, the code and you can see the code even here it's just the same code which you have written two minutes ago so yeah so we'll uh, so now uh, i hope you got an idea how to you know push your code from your local machine to your uh, remote machine so i'll do some changes in uh, github and then i'll uh, you know teach how to clone uh, how to you know pull all the changes to your local machine so we'll just uh, edit the code we'll just write uh, another state uh, print statement so you have option to you know uh, write the commit uh, saying uh, commit message so we'll write So once you do that, you have option to describe if it's a big change. So now we just added a print, uh, added added just a line. So I don't think we need to explain it. So we'll just commit the changes. So once you do that, you can just uh, check here. You are in master branch, and if you just open your program.py file, or your your changes have been updated, and there are two statements right now. But if you check your local machine, it's still the same. even if you refresh it's just having a single line because your local machine uh, like don't understand what changes you have done in github so uh, every time when you do that you just need to uh, pull your changes to your uh, local machine and it will automatically update all the changes so to do so uh, we'll just we have a option here to uh, pull all the changes from your github to your local machine uh, to do so you just need to go to remote fetch origin so origin is a uh, no uh, by default origin is the master branch so you don't have any other option to uh, pull changes from other branches so right now we are just having one branch which is origin so we'll just pull all the changes from the origin so once you do that you get success message saying all the changes have been uh, pull to your local machine and uh, here if you go to merge and local merge you are just uh, updating your origin slash master branch so your files are not uh, just up, uh, your files are not updated now uh, to update your files you just need to go to origin slash master branch and just select that branch and just click on merge so once you do that you can see here uh, three changes and there are like two lines added and one is uh, one line has been deleted so you can see two line uh, two insertions and one deletions so only one file has been changed because we are working on the program dot py so yeah so now if you check your local repository and the you know files the new line has been automatically updated that is because you have pulled all the changes from your uh, remote repository to your local machine uh, so yeah so i think you understood how to you know uh, change uh, change the code in github and pull all the changes to your local machine so now we'll uh, talk about branches so branches is nothing but uh, uh, by default uh, there is a master branch which is uh, like a root so uh, branches are nothing nothing but uh, uh, copying all the files and duplicating uh, duplicating it so if you have seen like if you are using any apps then you get updates regularly so master branch is a, a branch is is a stable branch where all the uh, uh, files are stable so if you want to add or you know add some features so you have to create a new branch and then add it there because if you uh, add it directly to the master branch and by chance if it crashes then your whole app or the you know website will crash so it's a good practice uh, to you know create a new branch every time and uh, all do the all uh, do the changes there and then check all uh, whether it whether it is working fine so if it is working fine then you can push the, those changes to your master branch and uh, you can deploy it uh, so to create a new branch you just need to go to branch and create you can name it as uh, new branch or uh, you can you can name it as anything so i'll be uh, name it uh, i'll be writing as brand new branch and uh, you have option to you know select the branch from 
So right now we are just having a one branch which is master. So we'll just create a duplicate of master branch. If you are having some other branches, then you have option to select even that. So we'll just use master right now, and we'll create a new branch. So once you create new branch, you can just check here. You have you know successfully created a new branch. Uh, so yeah. So if you want to you know switch between your branches, then uh, you just need to go to branches and you have option to check out. So check out is nothing but you are just changing your branches. So right now uh, we, were, we were in master and now we are in a new branch. We'll just check out to a, master, a new branch and you can see here it says your current branch is new branch. So yeah. So right now you just uh, you know uh, copied all the uh, files from your master branch to your uh, new branch. So we'll try to add some uh, uh, files, uh, add some uh, you know, do some changes to your code. Uh, so we'll add extra lines. And we'll just add a line and saying Akash is here. So once you do that, just save your uh, save your code and then you can uh, rescan again. Uh, I think I had explained it early. Rescanning is nothing but you are scanning or uh, you're just going through all your folders and checking the changes. So you can see here, uh, you can see the lines which are, you know, uh, uh, mentioned in green color is uh, a new line. And it, if it is mentioned in red line, then the line has been deleted. So you can see here, I added two extra lines called Swazi here and Akash here and deleted a, a previous line, which is Swazi here. So once you do that, you need to commit the changes so that you know uh, Git will track all the changes. So to do so, you just need to stage uh, change and it will automatically uh, start tracking all the changes. So once you do that, you just need to uh, write a simple message saying what changes you have done. I just tell, I added extra print, uh, extra line. Commit message is nothing but you just, you know, but telling your friend what changes you have made. So once you do that, you just you know uh, signing uh, sign off, and then uh, you, you can just uh, commit the message. Okay. So now yeah. So you can just notice here. Uh, we are in new branch, and uh, even here you can just notice. So even here you can notice the work we are in new branch. But if we go back to the master branch, what else, uh, what you can see, we will just see that now. So to uh, switch the branch, you just need to use uh, checkout. So we'll, uh, you know, go back to the master branch and uh, check what are the uh, files are available. So once you check out your uh, uh, master branch, you can see here, you are in master branch and you can just see two, uh, two lines of code. But uh, you have just added an extra line. So, the, uh, so yeah, you added extra line, but that is in the new branch. So, you know, just uh, we'll go back to the uh, previous branch and just show the changes. You can see here, there are like only two lines. And then if you check out to the new branch, OK, I am in a, a wrong option. We need to check out. I was in. A, uh, sorry, my bad. Uh, we'll just check out to the uh, new branch and then just check out. You can see here there were two lines and now there are three lines. So yeah, so you have you know created a new branch and added lines there, uh, but your master branch is still lagging behind your new branch, new changes. So just to update your uh, update your uh, you know root branch which is master, we just need to create a pull request. So uh, pull request is nothing but you just saying, you know, just comparing all the changes and, uh, you know, uh, asking the owner to create a pull request. And uh, merging is nothing but you just, you know, uh, 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 you just uh, comparing the uh, two files, uh, two branches, and then you're just, you know, taking the new uh, lines and the new changes and adding it to the uh, uh, previous branch, which is master branch. So we'll uh, merge the, all the changes to a master branch. So, okay, uh, I by mistake it closed. Uh, 
there's no much changes so you are in new branch so we'll just uh, go back to the master branch yeah so we are in master branch you uh, so whenever you create a, a merge request you just need to go to the, the branch where you need to uh, you know update your uh, branch and then you need to create a merge of uh, you just need to create a merge uh, merge request so you are merging from uh, you have option to you know select the branches right now we are just having one branch so we are just merging from uh, uh, new branch itself so we will just merge so once you do that you can just see here one file has been changed and uh, there are like two insertion and one deletion so yeah so I, as i said uh, it tracks all the changes and uh, it just tells what changes have, have you made so yeah so uh, if you check if you, you know uh, check to the check out to the master branch you can see uh, even here you can see uh, all the files all the ch uh, changes have been updated successfully so this is how you can you know create branch, uh, branches and uh, you know add some lines and then if it is working fine then only you can push to the master branch so yeah so we have done you know uh, creating branches and you know merging so we'll you know uh, push all these changes again to your uh, local machine from uh, from your local machine to your uh, remote machine so if you check your github now we'll just refresh so you can just see here you can you know having only one branch and uh, you are only having a one uh, file here which is program that uh, program dot py and it is having only two files but if you you know compare your uh, local machine you have you know you are in master branch and uh, there are like two branches uh, and uh, you have three uh, print uh, statements so you have you know made changes in a local machine but it's not updated in your uh, remote machine so to do so you just need to push your code from your local machine to your remote machine so we'll do that now uh, so we'll get back to git geo and uh, you know once everything is like uh, everything is merged then you can just uh, go to remote then uh, push you have option even here to push your changes so you can use any of one of them so you can just push the changes and you have option to you know select the branches so since we have already merged the uh, changes to the master branch you can just use the master branch <coughs> So we'll just push the changes to your uh, uh, changes to the uh, remote machine. So yeah, so it says you successfully pushed all the changes to your uh, remote machine. So once you do that, you can just go to your uh, GitHub and you know just get back to your uh, repository and just refresh. So here you can see uh, you have two branch uh, you have branches master here and uh, your file has been updated there were two lines of code now you have three lines of code so yeah this is how you work and uh, i'll just you know explain few options which are available in git gui so yeah so uh, by mistake like, if you do some changes uh, so you have option to you know go back to you know you have undo option you have read option and uh, you have branches so i think i have explained create branch so uh, create is just you know uh, creating a new branch and uh, checkout is just you know switching between branches you, you have also option to you know rename your uh, branch by mistake if you you know type something there's a type or you know type something wrong you can just rename and you have option to delete your branches like if you have too many branches then i don't think it's necessary you can just delete it so also you have option to reset uh, like uh, if you are you know uh, just go back to a you know, single branch which is master you can just uh, click on reset and you have option to uh, commit you can you know rescan stage commit all these things all these options will uh, are available even here you just you you know you can just go to here and do that or else you can just do it here so merging is nothing but you are you know, uh, comparing between uh, branches and you know uh, updating the other branch and yeah, you have option to you know fetch all the changes from your uh, remote machine to a local machine and uh, you know push all the changes from your uh, local machine to remote machine and yeah i think that's it i guess from my side uh, the uh, akash will be explaining how to create pull request how to collab and uh, collab with your friend or you know your teammate and you know use git and github 
सो या सो ओ टू आकाश okay i can see people in the chat you know getting all uh, scared looking at what happens uh, actually you don't need to worry about branches right now um, it's all it's all for later stages you know when you are collaborating with your friends um, but right now i'll just show you how to do a very yeah. it's still presenting okay hi uh, okay, just give me a second just hi to that okay fine yeah so uh yeah you don't have to worry much about um, branches right now because since you guys are beginning level uh, so i hope uh, you guys were clear with the initial concept of how to uh, clone a repository from the github page then uh, how to make changes and push it uh, only till then would be uh, very useful for uh, if you are in a beginner level and you can explore branches in the later stages and come back to this video and uh, look at all that once you're clear with the basic uh, three concepts so pretty much there are uh, three concepts the first thing is uh, you make some changes second thing is you commit uh, and and the third thing is you push it so what happens is uh, obviously you are making a, a project and you need to write a code so in the creation stage or updation stage you do some changes or you create your files and um, in committing stage uh, you are telling the git vcs to that you are not going to make any more changes to these files right uh, but these stages uh, but these changes are still not uh, uploaded to your github and that is where the push option comes in right uh, right now you can see that he created a uh, git workshop uh, project and let's say that i'm his friend and i'm working with him on this in this second one i'm working uh, on this project with him right and how i can do that is well first thing of course i need to log into my github since the repository is there so i'll just write what i'm using okay using so there is a feature called uh, two factor authentication you guys can <laughs> do that and you will get this screen for uh, six digit code this is just to keep your uh, account secure right so okay so i have right now uh, logged into my github and uh, you guys can see that uh, over here uh, you have this option called search so what i can do there is i can write uh, swaz you know his uh, username github username and i can just search it and when i go there uh, you can see that there are some results here uh, which says repositories results so the thing is repositories are nothing but your projects your project files so over here you call them repositories but they are nothing but your project files whatever you are working on so what we will do is since uh, that's his username i'll go to users uh, over here i'm hovering over it right now you can see that there are two users matching it so if i go here you guys can see that there is a swastik shetty so i will click on his profile once i click on his profile uh, you can see uh, i'm over here and uh, on the top there is a repository tab so i'll just check i'll just click on that and i can see git workshop which is the first thing and it also says updated 6 minutes ago also over here it says the programming languages which can be helpful since uh, if let's say you know he wasn't working with me in this hackathon and he just wanted to show it to the world so you know if you are a javascript developer there is no use of you looking into python code you know unless until you are interested in that so that's why uh, the git like github shows you the language beforehand so i'll just go to git workshop and uh, let's say i don't have anything in my computer right now right so first thing what i will do is uh, you guys can see my screen okay yeah. so i will create a new folder okay. and i will name it projects e r o j s c s y and you can see that i have created a new folder called project okay i'll just keep it in the middle so that you guys can see it okay so i have created a new folder projects and now i'll open this so right now there isn't anything in my folder it says my folder is empty and i will download all my projects in this folder right so right now 
my first project which will be the repository which he created git workshop i will be downloading that so i will go to git bash here you guys can see uh, now you can use git bash if you are using cli but right now since we are doing it for beginner levels uh, we are going to use git gui So you can see that uh, Git GUI is open. Now, if I go back to my uh, account, uh, see the thing is right now the code is on his uh, in in his profile, right? And if I do any changes and try to push it, obviously you know you cannot just push directly into someone else's profile because uh, that's like you know unauthenticated. So because uh, let's say that you are working on a project, right? And then there is uh, someone who just has made some really uh, rubbish code and he's just pushing into your and you know it's you you don't want it so that's why uh git like github doesn't allow you to uh, push directly code to someone else's repository and you need to have your own version of it right so how to create a, a, your own version of it is uh, i'll just go to my github once and uh, in my repositories yeah you can just click on your profile and you can see your repositories so yeah so right now in my repositories uh, you cannot see anything as uh, get get iphone workshop with the create the project which he created right it's not in my profile so how i will get into my profile is by clicking on something called as fork you can see on the right most uh, there is something called as fork you know so what i will do is uh, i will fork it what forking will do is uh, you can click on your profile if you have like various organizations and stuff but right now uh, i'm just going to click on mine if you are not in any organization it will automatically just uh, fork into your uh, profile right so right now it says i'm um, forking swa slash kit git workshop and uh, if i go to my repositories i'll refresh it once and you can see that uh, it shows git workshop here and if i click on this you can see that it says akashdeep slash git workshop whereas if you go into the original one it says swas slash git workshop okay so you need to keep in mind that you or whatever changes you are making you are making to your own repository don't make it to your friends repository because usually we get uh, queries such as uh, we are you are not able to push and that is one of the main reasons what we observe is people trying to push into their friends repository directly right so that is not uh, possible you try to use yeah just use your own repository so when you are sure that it says your name slash git workshop or whatever project you have it's then that you go for your code right and you can see the cloning link here so just copy this you can click here or just directly copy now uh, if you remember i created this project i created this folder and inside this folder i clicked on uh, wait i'll just close this for once I, I i right clicked and then i clicked on git gui here right if you do that uh, it will automatically run in this folder so in source location is from where i'm downloading it from where i am trying to clone it i'll just paste it and if you look at the url as well you can see that my name is in the middle and that means i am make i am cloning my own project and in the target directory either you can browse and do it or you guys can just directly write git workshop or whatever project name you want it to be and then you click on clone and it shouldn't take much time okay so let's say that he worked on the first version of it or he made some things uh, so i need to get that to my computer so that i can make some more changes and push it back right so right now you guys can see that it is uh, already cloned so over here in my project you guys can see git workshop is present it downloaded and it's in my computer so if i open this the files are here the program is she wrote 
so now uh, let me try to do some changes to it okay so i will just open it let's open it with notepad and i will try to do some changes like print these are my changes okay so now i have um, added a line called these are my changes and i will save it as soon as i save it and i click on rescan you guys can you can see that uh, it says yeah this thing is in green so what green means is uh, as he explained uh, the the lines are added so right now our line is added uh, next thing what we will do is uh, as i said there are three stages right so the first stage is creation or updation or anything you know your changes whatever changes you're doing so right now we have uh, completed a first stage which is we have created our new line second thing what we will do is uh, we are going to commit it right now before committing we'll just uh, stage the changes so in stage changes you can see uh, it's in green right now right uh, if it is under this green that means whatever commit you will do it will be uh, happening on that file okay so once you are done with uh, staging the changes you can write a commit message now why commit messages are important is uh, when you're working with your friends you know it's uh, understandable you guys are having a small team and you are working on it but what if you want to show it from to someone who is uh, working in some other place right so as soon as they look into your commit messages they understand like something was added here so you can write uh, commit messages such as added login page or something so whenever he wants to go to that particular thing he can just look into commit messages go go over it okay so right now i will write these are my changes right i made some so my commit message will be i made some changes okay and you can just click on sign off uh, sign off pretty much what it does is it adds your uh, sign to the uh, end of commit message it's not important but uh, if you are collaborating again Uh, so that people can see who actually made the commit okay and then you can just click on commit once you do it over here you can see it says created commit and then you know there is some commit id which is automatically generated and it says the commit message i made some changes right this is the same message which i um, which i wrote here now next thing is push so right now nothing will be on my repository over here so akash deep slash uh, git workshop and you know if i go to program.py it still has the code which he wrote my changes are still not shown here so what i will do is i will click on push yeah master now uh, i'm logged in but if you are doing it for the first time it will ask you for your username and password so you can just write it uh, but once you're done with that every time after that if you try to push it it will automatically push okay so it says uh, success in green that means uh, it is it should be pushed so we will check it now yeah if i check it you can see that it says these are my changes which i wrote in my local machine and if you notice here next to my name uh, on top yeah if you if you follow my cursor it says i made some changes this is the same message which i wrote in commit message if i click on it it tells me what changes were made it says that this thing is green that means these were added by me all right so uh, yeah so you can see and over here it just says the file name so what we need to do now is uh, right now these are in my now we we were supposed to collaborate right and right now whatever changes i did whatever changes i did that's in my project he still doesn't have it so what we need to do in that case is as i said you cannot directly push to uh, uh, anyone else's project so this is where pull requests come in you are making some changes and you are creating a pull request saying the main person the uh, original creator to you pull the uh, to pull the changes into his repository the main repository right so if you are collaborating with your friend you take the project from him you make some changes you push it to your uh, repository and then you ask him Uh, to pull those changes to his repository which will be the main okay now how we do that is right now if if i go to this is uh, in my account you can see akashdeep/git workshop if i go down 
it says these are my changes now this is in my repository if i go to swastics if i go to program.py it doesn't show here right so now i will ask him to pull the changes into his repository and how you do that is if you go uh, you just click on your uh, repository right and on top you can see a message which says the branch is one commit ahead of his branch swas that's his username right so what uh, so this is automatically telling you that some changes were made by you which he doesn't have it right so it all automatically suggests you to create a pull request asking him to pull so i'll just click on pull request and so there are some uh, messages and stuff here and it says what changes were made by me you know uh, it it uh, tells you that uh, so what changes were made made by you and do you confirm to pull request so i will click on create pull request here okay so it says you know they have written the message as well discuss and review the changes in uh, comparison with the others so this is just a preface and you can click on create pull request again you can make some uh, commit message here and you click on create pull request all right so now i have created a pull request it says the branch has no conflicts and uh, yeah so all checks have passed all these things so these are just messages which are automatically displayed you don't have to worry about this now when i go to his uh, account right right now i'm on his uh, his repository and i refresh it and somehow it's not on his screen now the problem here is i have just requested him right i have not pushed directly to his repository this was just a request now if you go a little up here is a tab of pull requests okay now it says two pull requests yeah so someone else has already created a pull request aditya yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i think that's his friend yeah. uh yeah so someone has already created a pull request but then uh this is my pull request right so this is my request and this is aditya's request so now there are two requests whichever he finds is better he is going to merge it right and i think he will show you how to merge it that's also pretty easy because uh, it's only like uh, one one or two clicks okay so right now i have created a pull request and he will show you how to merge it into the main project uh, so yeah uh, i'll just explain how to you know Uh, see the changes and the merge pull request. So uh, let me share my screen first. Wait. Uh, I think there is a question from the turtle asking, "How do you start?" Well, uh, first thing I think you can go if you if you go a little back in the video, you can see. Uh, it starts from you creating your GitHub account first thing, and next thing is downloading Git. You download uh, Git Bash or Git GUI uh, to your local machine. after that what you have to do is uh, you create a you create a repository on the github page like your own profile uh, i think he showed that as well so that is also pretty easy there's like two or three clicks that's it and then you clone it to your local machine you make some changes and then you push it right you can see all those in the video uh, i think that should be clear so uh, yeah i think you can continue with the uh yeah uh Thank you for your screen sharing. No, no, I'm not. Okay. So yeah, we just started. Uh. So uh, as Akash told, he already created a pull request. So I now have to, as a you know repo owner, have to compare and you know check whether it's a valid pull request. And if it is, uh, you know, the valid or if it is, he, if he added a uh, you know added a feature or. No improved my code, then I can obviously you know create a pull, uh, merge pull request. So we'll, uh, I'll just go back to my repo which I created earlier. So here you can see it says, yeah, it says there are two pull requests. So I think Aditya Pai and uh, Akash Deep have you know created pull request. So I just open Akash Deep's pull request now. So here you can see Akash Deep have you know. Uh, Uh, created a pull request and it says uh, it also shows the message, the commit message. So yeah, I think I think I think you can show the file changes. Ah uh, yeah. So once you do that, you can you know compare the changes here. Uh, you have option to you know compare the changes. So 
as i said if it is marked in green it says uh, it you uh, no he or you know someone added the line if it is marked in red it says someone deleted the line so here you can see akaship you know oh, edited the uh, file program.py and added a line uh, added a print line so if it is a valid and you know if it is a uh, you know it improves your code or you know he added some features then you can obviously you know, uh, merge the uh, pull request so merge is nothing but uh, you as i said like you just uh, updating your repo uh, yeah so you have option here just to you know merge the changes so you can also write the merge uh, message and you can just merge the pull request so once you do that you can just go back to the code and then you can open the program.py file here you can see the line has been updated which akash ha akashdeep has been uh, ha uh, akashdeep added so yeah also we will see aditya's pull request uh, i think yeah he created a file aditya.py and uh, uh, added a print statement Yeah, can you can you show him how to review? Like in case you don't want to merge it. Yeah. So uh, yeah, that's a good point. So imagine he you know uh, created a added some line which will cause harm to your code. So and if you don't want to you know merge the pull request, then you have option to you know requesting for changes and uh, closing the pull request. So under the review changes, you have option to you know comment, approve, and uh, request re uh, request changes. So if you want Adit, uh, if you want someone else to you know change the uh, change the code or uh, change the code or you know uh, make some changes, then you can just you know click on that and uh, write a message. Uh, saying, Let's say uh, uh, yeah, enter your name as well. <laughs> yeah. So I uh, just uh, I just you know write a message, enter your name, and uh, I'll just you know submit review. So now he, uh, you know, now Aditya will get uh, notification saying that uh, Swaz has requested for the changes. Uh, that is because uh, if I merge directly to my uh, to my branch, uh, my code, the whole code will, you know, uh, uh, will be harmed. Okay. So you, it's a good practice, you know. You you know review the code and if there are like, some changes, then you request them to make those changes and uh, you know uh, then merge the pull request. Also, you have option to close the pull request. So, uh, as I said, like if uh, if the uh, if it is a spam pull request or you know uh, it's not useful, then you have option to merge the pull request. So, I'm sorry, Aditya, you can create pull request again. <laughs> yeah, I think I think he got it. He wrote it in the chat, so he he already got the notification. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you can see the uh, chat section in the YouTube. So, yeah, this is how we can do and. Uh, Uh, Akash can tell about hack to buff fest as well. Like. Yeah, fine, sure. Uh, I'll be sharing my. Screen. No, I'll just show. Like if you. Know. Okay. Uh, yeah, fine. Uh, can you open the education pack as well? Yeah. Okay, fine. So I think the first thing which we'll be showing is uh, GitHub education pack. So I think a lot of people don't know about this. Uh, GitHub education pack gives students uh, the ultimate power to ha ultimate power and tools that you can use. Uh, all right. So you can uh, click on uh, GitHub. student developer pack i think we will be putting it in the chat section we will be uh, giving the link in the chat section right so yeah can you go down so over here what github student pack gives you is all these tools uh, for really like okay it's free almost okay, yeah almost it's, free. it's it's free everything is free for you guys so there are like a lot of uh, offers that they give you for free so all you have to do is you have to sign up with your uh, college email id right and then they ask you to verify if you are not from an allowed list uh, college but uh, yeah it's pretty simple to do it only takes like two or three days for verification uh, at max but yeah all these things you get for free including domain name so you can uh, create your own domain name and uh, yeah you, you can host your website for free uh, that too for one year so this is for two years that they give you yeah. this uh, student education pack and you guys can use it i uh, would highly recommend because what do you have to pay nothing right and uh, yeah so you guys can check it out the link is already in the chat 
yeah yeah it has a lot of things even uh, jet brains or mongodb if you guys are interested it gives you uh, almost 200 dollars on mongodb you can yeah 200 dollars credits on uh, mongodb you guys can use that as well then get up desktop uh, that is like easier version of uh, git you know all these things what we did uh, it is all it is almost the same thing but a uh, very uh, advanced uh, ui and uh, yeah twilio if you guys are uh, into making uh, whatsapp bots uh, all those things if you are into making bots and stuff uh, with the sms's or voice calls all those things you guys can use the twilio uh, platform as well it gives you 50 dollars as api credits uh, then mailgun so you can see it gives you 20000 free emails so you know mass mailing and all those things you guys can use um, mailgun api as well so do check it out uh, do go to the link in the um, chat box and uh, yeah and after this i think you guys um, should uh, we'll go to hacktober fest yeah so if you guys have already registered for our hackathon if you don't know can you just go to dark mode because yeah <laughs> who likes light mode yeah, so yeah the so if, looks good if you guys uh, yeah you guys can see that we are wearing these uh, hacktober fest t-shirts both of us uh, and uh, these are from uh, yeah college yeah turtle i think you are you're asking if college email id yes uh, i think y- you need to have a college email id you can use your normal email id but then again you will have to upload your documents and stuff mm-hmm. and uh, the thing with email college email id is uh, your e- your college uh, might be in allow list so you know it takes only minutes to uh, get verified all right so yeah so you guys can see that we are wearing these t-shirts and uh, these t-shirts we got from uh, all, all the way from netherlands yeah. and this is uh, due to hacktober fest last uh, last, last year. year right so what hacktober fest does is it's a it's an international uh, open source celebration what we can say so it is connected by digital ocean github and dev so what it does is it's about um, promoting uh, hackathons and uh, open source in general right? so there can be a lot of things going on throughout and you will see a lot of events uh, even if you are from some other college you you might be having some events as well uh, with regard to hacktober fest uh, so what hacktober fest uh, gives you is uh, you can uh, right now we showed you how to create pull request right if you create four four pull request you know valid pull request don't spam <laughs> uh, yeah if you create valid uh, pull request you get a t-shirt for free right uh, and it comes from like uh, netherlands uh, it takes like one month yeah one yeah, month and also you get stickers uh, and goodies yeah with the t-shirt you get uh, stickers and some goodies as well so all you need to do is just create four pull requests you can make pull requests to your friends projects or you can create to anyone's projects on github right and uh, all you have to do is you can just go to uh, start hacking yeah if you click on start hacking over there yeah and uh, you can click on sign in with github so all your pull requests have to be on github you cannot use some other uh, platform so yeah right now you can see that swastik has created all these pull requests and on the right you can see it says four of four pull requests that means he has completed the hacktober fest challenge now uh, what they will do is uh, they will verify his pull requests and if they are valid they are going to give him the t-shirts now usually uh, most like most of the pull requests are validated like pretty easily because uh, yeah because if you are like legitly contributing it doesn't matter if you are uh, even updating the readme.me and creating something really uh, good changes if you are making some good changes then you can um, get this yes fine so yeah so you guys can just check this out plus uh, um, is there anything else sorry, about the events you can just go to all uh, you can yeah. view all the events which are going uh, which are going on uh, during the hacktober fest and uh, also you can see uh, our event here so here yeah, you can see uh, in the events it says hack night by sosc so that is a, again it is a part of uh, hacktober fest so every year we conduct a hackathon uh, almost 28 to 48 hours uh, yeah so we conduct it uh, every year but usually we conduct it offline but you know due to the pandemic situation we had to do it online uh, so you can go to our website yeah. So, yeah so this is a website you guys uh, can 
go here and apply for def i think you guys have already applied in devfolio surprises sponsors uh, do you if you guys have any um yeah i think i think uh aditya pai has uh, yeah, yeah one more thing yeah all, all peers all pull requests won't be accepted it depends on uh, if your pull request looks legit yeah as well as uh, also you need to uh, there are only 70000 like they say 70 to 75 yeah, yeah there are like 70000 um people who will be getting the t-shirts so you know as soon as you complete it, that's better so do make sure that you complete it by today or tomorrow to you know have a uh, advance yeah fine uh what else do we have that's it yeah i think that should be it and you guys uh, hopefully you guys have already joined the discord server if you are participating in the hackathon and you guys will be assigned with some mentors and if you guys have any doubts throughout your hackathon uh, regarding git or github you guys can ask your mentors or you can ask us directly we hack are night. in uh, uh, hack night uh, discord server as well so you guys can mention it yeah good great great <laughs> yeah so fine if you guys have any doubts you guys can leave it in the comments and also if, like if you want to create a pull request and you know get a t-shirt then uh, you can just go to this repository where you know people are adding just uh, you know simple programs which they do like uh, writing a loops and if conditions or uh, you can you know check the like people are already added around uh, 60 programs so yeah, you can add, you know, simple programs in any language and uh, create a, a pull request, but don't spam the, you know, simply spam, you know, editing the existing uh, readme file or, you know, editing the code. If if it is legit, then uh, obviously we'll merge the pull request and, uh, uh, yeah, uh, it will be, you know, counted for you, you know, for pull request and uh, you'll get a t-shirt from GitHub officially. So, yeah, that's it, I guess. So, if you have any queries, you can just drop it in the chat section uh, we'll try to answer it or you can text us on discord directly yeah. you guys can just do at swaz or at akashdeep yeah and yeah i think that should be it we will wind yes, up yes, now sir. and uh, the hackathon will be starting in like 45 minutes or something so yeah thank you